Hello there, fellow adventurers. In the first Indie Dev episode, we visited the north of England in Yorkshire Gubbins. Now we're going to be looking at the games of Simon Reed, aka Pilchard. I already talked about his latest game, Claude and the Phantom, which ranked number 5 in my Top 10 Adventure Jam video. I also mentioned his previous entry in Adventure Jam 2017, The Treasure of Lock Inch. According to some unnamed professor, there's buried treasure on the island in the lock, and so we have to figure out how to get over there. On the shore we meet a couple fishermen, one of whom is blasting a boombox to attract fish. A fish really attracted by jazzy drumming? Let's find out, shall we? The lock and its surroundings are shrouded in mystery, such as the nearby wildcat woods which is said to be full of cats and trolls, just like the internet. Well, I learned the best way to deal with trolls from King's Quest. Another landmark is Ben Bron Mountain, climbed by Benoit Jospin in 1824. There's actually a crossover reference to this in Pilcher's other game, Hang On, which refers to Claude Jospin of the famous mountain climbing Jospin dynasty. After solving the puzzle of the two fishermen and overcoming our fear of sheep, it's time to take a jet ski ride across the lock 007 style. The treasure turns out to be a medallion with a jewel in the center, which together with the Staff of Ra can be used to find the location of the Lost Ark. Moving on to Hang On, we're taking a break from the hustle and bustle of city life and retreating to a solitary hut in the mountains, just like Henry David Thoreau in Walden. Our first task is to send a postcard, which is straightforward enough by taking the cable car down to the local post box, but strange things are afoot on the mountain. What manner of creature is this, the fabled yeti of troll spits? The mischievous bugger steals the gear that makes the cable car run, and we're left stranded. Never fear though, because Rita the post girl is here. This adds another dimension to the game as you get to play as two different characters. There's a reference here to the famous quote from Where Eagles Dare. Broadsword calling Danny boy, broadsword calling Danny boy, over. And so we must brave the perils of the mountain and take care of the fearsome yeti. Revealing how to do this would give the whole game away, so I'm going to let sleeping yetis lie. In the end we see the yeti riding the cable car down the mountain, perhaps to kidnap one of the local villagers who you'll have to rescue in Hang On Part 2, Where Yetis Dare. Moonlight Moggy is the story of a black cat who's given the task of finding their missing feline friend. To accomplish this we must explore this moonlit backyard, a charming place complete with garden gnome flipping the bird. The other creatures you can talk to are a French snail with a penchant for rocket leaf, and a pipe dwelling spider who's afraid of the moon. Your progress is barred by a plastic bag blowing in the wind, which might be terrifying for some, but for others is the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. My favourite description is of the cat flap, gateway to luxury, which eloquently sums up what home means from a cat's perspective. The game consists of a single scrolling screen, but it has a great atmosphere in which you can sit back and survey your own little kingdom. So whether you like ghostly cats, sleeping yetis, or cheeky gnomes, check out Pilchard's games in the links below. To finish this episode, let's climb the ladder of enlightenment and hear some wisdom from the wise old tree.